Hello again, sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather for this Thursday, April 4, 2024. We'll be talking about a special look here at the weather and sky conditions for the upcoming big solar eclipse on April 8th in the lower plains, the Mississippi Valley, into the Ohio Valley, and up into the interior portions of the Northeast. So a lot to talk about. Let's get right to it. This is an important event. A lot of people are traveling. I saw a report today that every single hotel in the in eclipse is almost completely book solid. So this is going to be really quite an economic boom for all the hotels and motels and bed and breakfasts from northeast Texas right through Missouri up into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, northern New England. First, on this, of course, is the website right here. As you can see on the bottom of this page, and then, of course, we different products. This is the grain trading for our grain traders as well. Different products here. You can get the U.S. grain weather, the overseas grain weather, the seasonal forecast, or the audio reports. And this here is the operational forecasts for the, for the here in the Mid-Atlantic. Three different products there we offer as well. There's the uh, uh, Twitter page. You can see right there the weather uh, grain. And there's the um, threads page as well. And then here is the Facebook page, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. All right. This here is the actual eclipse path, so we'll start out taking a look at this. This is a nice overall view. You can see the path of it, again, running from central Texas oops, up into uh, western and northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, into southern Illinois, central Indiana, centrally, generally southern and central Indiana, northern Ohio, then up into Buffalo and Erie, and then the eastern Great Lakes. And then up into, north, I guess, northern Vermont, uh, Montreal, a place like that. And then this is the Ohio Valley track. A lot of people are going to go in this area here, you can see, for southeast Missouri, all the way up into Cleveland. And then this here is the northeast track. You can see more details there. The eclipse going from Cleveland to Buffalo to uh, maybe hitting Syracuse, I think, in totality. Then up to Watertown, Messina, uh, pretty close, just south of Montreal, I think, Plattsburgh, then up into northern um, Vermont. Okay, uh, what's going on with the weather pattern here? So let's take a look at this. Um, this here is the upper air pattern. Now, a lot of people, a lot, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media where they're just people giving out the climatology. Well, this is what the skies typically look like in early April. I don't do that sort of stuff. Uh, monkeys and typewriters can do that. That's not really forecasting. That's just giving people bullshit. So this is some serious forecasting. So let's get into it. This is the upper air pattern here now for Sunday night uh, on uh, April uh, 7th. And you can see there's the blocking feature, a big, huge a, a positive anomaly here. The red represents an extreme positive anomaly. So this is called a block. All right, and this here is the upper low uh, in the, Midwest, in the uh, western United States and up into the Dakotas. There's one upper low. There's an extension of it here. You can see this, another piece of energy coming into California, another big storm for California and the southwestern states on Sunday night. Now, this upper low wants to move eastward, and if it was able to move eastward, it would probably screw up the viewing for much of the central and eastern U.S., but the block here is going to stop the upper low, so it can't progress any further. All right. Now, what happens is that this up, this other low piece of energy in California, this is going to drop down towards Mexico and southwest Texas. When it does that, the ridge here, these lines are going to expand northward. They're going to push up northward. So what this means is that this means that the heights are building in the atmosphere, which suppresses cloud cover and suppresses rain. Let me show you what I mean. This next slide, this is valid on Monday morning, the day of the eclipse, April 8th. So you see the upper low here. Because the green area, this new piece of energy coming into California and northwest Mexico, Baja, Arizona. There is the upper low in the Dakotas. Now look at the two black lines here I've drawn in here. One is the 576 decameter height line. The other one is 564. There's 564. There's 576. Now look what happens. Follow the lines. See this first black line? It goes from, let's say, uh, southwest Missouri right through St. Louis then in Indianapolis, right? Now look what happens 12, over the next 12 hours. It goes north of Chicago. See how it pushes north? The same thing here. Look at the black line here. Barely, not even getting into Tennessee. See this? Not even getting to Tennessee. Now it's in central and northern Tennessee, 12 hours later. So what happens is this energy is pushing down here, and that causes the ridge to build, and that causes the skies to clear out Monday afternoon in time for the eclipse. And then this is now Monday night, Tuesday morning. This big upper low is coming eastward. It's going to produce a massive rainstorm for the eastern U.S. later on in the week. All right. So let's take a look at the European model here. Now, this is the, uh, the, uh, this is the early morning European model, I believe. Yeah, and you can see there is the upper low in, in the Dakotas. 
right with a couple of fronts here and it looks like rain here in indianapolis into illinois uh into indiana kentucky not looking great but uh by the time we get to monday morning the upper low is now in minnesota it's moved further north and you can see the front here is completely falling apart there's almost no rain here whatsoever and if we look at the cloud cover now this is the 12 z run of the european the afternoon run thursday look at this is at 11 a.m oh it's not april 4th let me change that to april 8th sorry about that and you can see here on April 8th, the day of the eclipse, look at all the clear skies here in Boot Hill, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, all the clear. Now, even here, you're getting some clouds in northeast uh, uh, Arkansas, but that's not bad. You know, a lot of this is overdone and a lot of this is high clouds. We'll see that in just a minute. And in Pennsylvania, it looks like in northwest Pennsylvania, uh, western New York State, eh, not looking great. But again, a pretty good cloud cover. This is a pretty good amount of sunshine and very little cloud cover. And like I said, this is all overdone. Let me show you what I mean here. Now, this is a Thursday morning European four panel. So we're looking at this low level clouds, okay, uh, high level clouds and mid level clouds. So you can see um, there's some high level clouds here. And we're talking 25,000 feet up, very thin. But the low level clouds, the mid level clouds, there's not a, a cloud anywhere in Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, just a few in, in Oklahoma, in Ohio, and Kentucky, and, and Western Pennsylvania. And all of this, the totality is here, but this is very thin clouds. And I'm sure this is underdone in the, in the, uh, here. So I'm not worried about this at all. Now, this is, uh, again, this is the uh, European, this is the 12Z run. And you can see the same thing. Now, this is the updated run. This was the 0Z run. This is the new Thursday afternoon run here, Thursday afternoon, the 12Z cycle. Again, low clouds, nothing at all here at all. Mid-level clouds, nothing in the Ohio Valley, Arkansas, Missouri, the Boot Heel, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Perfect, perfect weather. And then the high clouds, look how much lower this is. You see the difference between uh, this? You see the high clouds here, right? And then look here. Very different, hugely different. Again, what's happening is as we're getting closer to the Monday, April 8th, the models are seeing the atmosphere pattern better, which means they're understanding where the clouds are going to be. And the high level clouds, just like the low level and mid level clouds, are breaking up. And we're looking at much better conditions. So this is really nice to see here. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the relative humidity. Okay. And just to give you an idea of the clouds. Now, this is from early. Uh, this is uh, 0Z and 12Z. So um, this is at uh, Sunday. This is, excuse me, this is uh, early Monday morning around 4 a.m. So you can see the front is here. This is where the front is, a high level, 100% humidity, the purple, 99% in Chicago, Indianapolis, Western Kentucky, Tennessee. But behind it, you can see the clearing of a much lower humidity, 45% in St. Louis, 50% in Carbondale and Mount Vernon, 60% uh, in Northeast Arkansas. And then uh, this is now the uh, Monday afternoon at uh, 2 p.m. Look at this, 25%, 30% of humidity, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, Southeast Missouri, a lot of people going there in the boot heel, Cape Girardeau, Northeast Arkansas, ideal conditions. Even in, in Indiana, Ohio, only 40%, 50% humidity. Look at the dry air in here. I mean, come on, folks. Looks outstanding, just outstanding. Uh, this is the 850 humidity level, one mile above the ground, okay, from the midday run. Look at this. This is valid, 11 a.m., Monday, April 8th. Look at the dry, look at the dry air in here. Look how low, how dry the air is, 25, 30% humidity, way, all the way from Oklahoma to Ohio. You could not ask for any better. Now, in Ohio, Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, there is maybe some clouds in here. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But even so, I mean, we're not looking at a lot here. It's still looking pretty good. A little high level clouds, not really a problem in Ohio. I mean, it's still looking pretty good. A little low level clouds in Ohio, but that's about it. All right, now the next slide here, this is a percentage. This is the European Ensemble. This looks at the ch percentage chance of seeing 25% or more probability of total cloud cover greater than 25%. See that? 25% or more on April 8th. Again, I said April 4th. I don't know why. Okay, at 1 p.m. April 8th. And what is the percentage? Look at this. Okay, this green stuff down in here, this is 25, 35% chance only as seeing cloud cover greater than 25 percent okay this is really remarkable cloud cover very a huge hole in the atmosphere lots of sunshine here in ohio and pennsylvania okay 50 percent chance 60 percent chance of 25 percent or more and then 
So that's just for the European. Uh, we can look at some other models here. This is the GFS. Again, this is the 12Z, the, the Thursday at midday run. This is valid Sunday night. So there's the low in eastern Nebraska, and there's the front going through uh, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, southeast Missouri, Arkansas. But it's moving very quickly, as you can see. It's progressing steadily eastward. And look what happens. This is the upper left. This is 7, 8, 7, 8 a.m. depending, 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. The front is falling apart here, so is the rain showers. And now by 1 o'clock on Monday, just a couple of showers in Kentucky and Tennessee, the whole thing is falling apart, and you're getting warm air in a dry slot. The warm air, dry air is coming up from Texas all the way into the Ohio Valley. Let me show the humidity levels on the 12Z GFS. This is... Uh, this is uh, from early. This is 6Z run on on, on uh, this Thursday morning. Again, 30 40% in Missouri, Illinois, 50% Indiana, Ohio, Arkansas. And then this is the updated run. You can see that it's getting even drier. So that's a nice run to see. And the total cloud cover on the GFS from 6Z this morning, there's your dry punch. Almost no clouds in here whatsoever in this blue area. You'll see that? Now, the problem here, again, to show you how this is overdone, the problem with these uh, doing cloud cover is that you go from zero to 100% in a space of like 30 miles, which is ridiculous. So all of this 100% here next to the blue, this is all nonsense. The 100% may be down here, but it's not going to be 100% cloud cover here, and then 50 miles to the north in St. Louis, there's no clouds at all. It's not going to be, it doesn't work that way, folks. It just doesn't. Okay, so a lot of this is overdone, so especially around the blue areas. This is the 12Z run, and you can see that even so, the blue is increasing in Indiana, in Illinois, in Missouri, in southern Iowa, in Kansas. You can see the blue is increasing here. Okay. And then if we look at the probabilities, again, the GFS model for valid 1 p.m. April 8th, 25% or more cloud cover only in Missouri and southern Illinois, a 15 to 25% chance. And then even in Indiana and Ohio, a uh, 50% chance here. So the real big dry punch right in here on the GFS. And then this is 50% or more. Again, so again, look at that zero. In, in central and eastern Missouri and southern and eastern southwestern Illinois, almost no chance at all of seeing 50% cloud cover or more. And even in central Illinois, southern Illinois, only a 25, 35% chance. So this is a huge dry area here. And in Indiana, Ohio, it's also a 40% chance at best of seeing 50% or more clouds. So this is a good sign of a lot of dry air and a lot of sunshine. And then finally, I guess we'll take a look here at the Canadian model. Same thing, Sunday morning. Okay, this is Sunday uh, morning, April 7th. There's the big low in Nebraska. Big front here looks pretty wet and threatening, this front coming eastward, but it falls apart very quickly, as you can see. This is uh, Monday, this is Sunday night, 8 p.m., and this is uh, Monday, 7 a.m. The front is just falling apart as it progresses eastward, and it doesn't, and, and the skies clear out very quickly. This low falls apart, it runs up against the blocking pattern in, in north of the Great Lakes, and the front falls apart. Let me show you what I mean. Look at the clouds here, 1 p.m. on the Canadian model. All right, look at all the blue here, just punching way up into this, okay, into, into, the, into uh, Ohio, even Ohio, 50%, 70% clouds, and this is overdone. But you can see the huge amount of sunshine and this main eclipse area right on the Ohio Valley. It looks ideal. And, and the Canadian, look at this. Chance of 25% or more clouds. Zero, according to the Canadian, in Kansas, Missouri, southern Illinois, which is where I'm headed to, by the way, uh, Indiana, into Ohio, on 20% chance. Look at that clear skies in here. Unbelievable. Now, this is probably overdone, I think, but it might not be. Uh, you know, it's definitely trending that way. All right, finally, just to go a little beyond this, what happens to this big piece of energy in the southern jet stream we talked about here at the beginning of the presentation, right? This, here is the upper low. This is Monday night, Tuesday morning in Arizona, now headed towards Texas. And what happens is, um, it, uh, let me go scroll to here at the bottom, here you go. Uh, we have a piece of energy coming down from western Canada here into uh, Saskatchewan and, Min and North Dakota. It's coming into Minnesota and this upper low here. This, these two features are going to merge into a monster storm, and it does that, and you can see the low forming here. This is the European model. This is on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. There's the big low in Memphis, a lot of rain in the Delta region, the Tennessee Valley into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, coming into New England. And then look at this storm for um, 
uh, thir next Thursday, a week from today. Look at this. Um, pretty big low. This looks like it could have a lot of severe weather with it because there's a lot of warm air coming up he uh, here. Um, let me see if I can go up. A lot of, yeah, let me call this market here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So we have a lot of um, warm air ahead of this low. Here's the low. The Gulf of Mexico is open. You see the southerly wind flowing up the warm air. And then again, uh, this is uh, for went Thursday. And this could be a pretty big severe weather threat for the Ohio Valley in the Mid-Atlantic. Thursday, uh, April 11th, and Friday, April 12th. We'll see how that plays out. Anyway, that's my forecast about the solar eclipse. So hopefully this gave you some information about why it's looking pretty good, where to go. Uh, I should be positive about it. I think the weather conditions are improving as we're getting closer to the event. The weather conditions are getting better and better. Uh, so I'm really positive about this. This looks like it could be a great experience. And the temperatures, I didn't prep present the temperatures I should have. We're going to see a lot of readings in the Ohio Valley, 65 to 75 degrees uh, with a lot of sunshine. So it should be ideal viewing conditions. I mean, just perfect viewing conditions. Um, this is going to be a really great eclipse for a lot of people. All right. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the, uh, uh, the Twitter page, over on the website, and over on the Facebook page.